Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Sun. Roll on that roulette. The roulette yeah. of going live. I tried my hardest to uh, wait for that last little bit to come out. <laughs> Spare Brit that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm so excited we're back. The holidays are over. Uh, hopefully you got your partridge in a pear tree. I don't know why you would want that. I would just want the pear tree. Think about it. Partridge, you got to take care of that. A pear tree? That's pears. You got to take care of a pear tree too, Jesse. Uh, you got to feed it mice. Please, we don't have to take care of nature. I think we've established that. <laughs> Burn but if it you all have down. a partridge True. in a pear tree, could you train the partridge to take care of itself and the pear tree? Oh. You could leave like a little bucket of like seeds and a little watering can. And every time the the soil gets wet enough, the bucket of seeds dispenses some seeds. <laughs> this, this is a terrible answer. idea. One of the this worst ideas I've ever heard. <laughs> well, well, we tried. How's everyone been how y'all been doing? What's good? Broads, what do you you got me a smirk on your face? You're like, oh, I know a secret. It's that I farted. What are you what are you doing right now? Oh, wow. Why did God make you guys like this? Like, I'm not <laughs> questioning his judgment because clearly it's great, but it's like when you look at the platypus and you're like, that was a weird what decision. I've always like said Jeff was the human platypus. You're like, that's that's a thing. Like, it's pink, it stands on one leg. Why? Have you, know? you seen the flamingo dance bronze? Yeah. It's They're amazing. weird. Yeah. And, and you guys are amazing, too. I didn't say you're not amazing. I'm just like, you know. Weird. It's like when the, God made these Powerpuff Girls, he was like sugar spice, sugar spice everything spice, nice, everything nice, and then instead of special, you know, chemical X, he put in like meth or something. Because sometimes <laughs> the shit you guys say, I, okay, chat, you guys are missing the reference of like some of the stuff Jeff said before. Whoa. <laughs> some of the things Jeff said. Yeah. <laughs> With a That's baby true. face and multiple appendages. No. Yes. <laughs> As I said, it's a quick explanation. I was talking about taking stem cell technology, creating a pseudo cloned version of a biological entity with the explicit purpose of being placed at the lower region of a woman to give orgasms. I imagine <laughs> it would have tentacles and tongues and fingers and all the different kinds of things you need for that kind of endeavor. And I said, as an ethical check mark, it needs to have the face of a child because if a woman- You know, there's some things that, that belong in the pre-show and not after the pre-show. I'm not sure- Now we've broken the barrier. Just because I'm writing ethical code off the whims of conversation doesn't mean we I need to judge. That. Welcome back. You can't Welcome make back any... to the sunfall cycle. You can't make I'm it so any better glad just because the dog's you. there. He hid, he oh, hid his holiness behind a dog it's butt. better. Barristan. It, uh, when we so first, now so, y'all so know. Now y'all have a little bit more context. Oh. That paired with the self taking care of pear tree. Just like. Same thing. You have such beautiful minds. You know? Yeah. And sometimes I'm just like. I, I'm not going to lie. If there was somebody came to me and told me that any one of you was a serial Contest. killer, I wouldn't be completely shocked. I'd be like, I can maybe see that. Yeah. Bronze, you understand that every You're DM, so creative about wait, it. Wait, wait, time, is out, a, is time a, out. Time a out. Serial killer who has found their outlet. Of all the people here, Brits, though, you're like, I can see you killing people. <laughs> That's because. <laughs> That's because the other day I was watching a show about a serial killer and he was trying to figure out like how to properly murder and dispose of the body. And I was like yelling at the TV. I was like, don't do that. This is a better way. It's not way. efficient. That's you're, not you're right. You're I was right. Like, I stand corrected. That's my biases. I just didn't think she could do it. I didn't think she could do it. And now I've been corrected. I've learned. And then I was like, well, I guess I could be a serial killer. I don't know. Seems like no, I feel work. like Brit's the type that would own a pot belly pig or a hippo for the express purpose of consuming bodies. <gasps> no, so here's the thing. See? I Brit could be a serial it. killer. It's just you don't add the asterisk. She would not be a successful one. I think she'd kill like three people and then she'd just fucking tell somebody. She'd be like, I kill three people. And they'd be like, guess what? I guess what? Fed them to like, my hippo. Yeah. Like, 
you're going to jail. And she's like, that's fine. I'll kill people there too. And they're like, all right, well, <laughs> you are a serial killer. <laughs> that sounds right. Sure. Yeah. Save us, from, save us from ourselves. <laughs> save us from ourselves. Senpai, save us. Uh, yeah, welcome back. Um, yeah, we had to do some finagling because uh, Zoom Zoom is down all across the network, so we had to uh, come up with another solution and set that up. So uh, if you see, like, you know, sound or cameras looking a little bit fuzzy today, uh, that, that may be what's going on. So thank you for bearing with us and your patience. Welcome back to the first episode of Season 2 the Sunfall Cycle. Uh, what, um, I guess, to get started, mm -hmm. what do we all remember of everything that has happened before? Everything? What are, what are the From the very things? beginning? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what, uh, oh, where oh, are you? No, Why are you here? What are you trying to do? Mm. Talk to me. The guards with the dark eyes, we saw them, and Jeff tried to go... Do the thing, with them. and then they got. We got them. They got us. We got them. We you learned about the, the dark eyes. Tell me, tell me more about the dark eyes. What's hey, going on? Hey, feel free to jump eyes? in, Jesse. Like, that's time. like Bill that's Cosby's the craziest, kids the darndest things. That's the craziest way to start. You're like, <laughs> Stephen's like, tell us everything, everything from the beginning, and you're just like. Guards, dark eyes, trying to flirt with them. <laughs> don't like... you remember? That was like the first thing that happened. The, you don't, yeah, you don't need to give me a blow by blow, but give me the, the important thing. I know. Thing. I'm well, starting well, on that. And then there Bron's was the tower, to get the blow -by -blow. and we were like, oh, the tower, what's... and we got to go inside. And then what's... we met the guy in the, you know, the basement with the jail. And then we had to do that a bunch of times. Not a sex basement. All right. Let, um, let me see if I can explain what was just said. Uh... There is there is a a mythical world in which the sun is dying slash blotting out and uh the there a, a mysterious like uh, shell I don't know like a magical force field appeared yeah, over like the castle of like the biggest kingdom in the land and uh we have all been sent or have decided to go uh explore this area to figure out what the hell's going on and many people have gone before, and um, no one has returned. And so we are all sort of like the ragtag group that's been sent in to investigate. Um, once we got inside, uh, we discovered that there were uh, weird, mysterious, black-eyed uh, guards and or, I'm going to say, castle employees who, uh, even though we kill them, Keep coming back to life because uh, here's the thing: almost everything comes back to life, even us. When we die, we are sent to the moon where Saloon lives, and she it keeps bringing us back to life and is like, "Hey, go back to this world and collect my tears because that will level you up." Winku. And on the moon, there's a crow, and he just like throws up stuff and like items for us, and um. Britt's character has a uh, house now there on the moon, and um, when we go back to this to this uh, castle area, we basically are dark soulsing slash darkest dungeoning our way through this, and uh, yeah, we encountered a lot of slimes that ate me way too many times. Um, we learned that bronze is really overpowered and can like shoot skull fire at people. We met. Um, Various other adventurers along the road who, like, teleported in and teleported out to help us. And uh, through trial and error, we managed to defeat both a weird jail man. <laughs> we managed yes. to uh, defeat a giant slime creature. We beat a dragon first try, haters. And um, we managed to die about 50 times to uh, statues that threw spears. Brit was eaten by rats. <laughs> And it was amazing. You were too. Uh, I don't remember that. And uh, Britt was eaten by rats. And then we eventually managed to make our way through. Thankfully, Jeff's character like just tanked his way to the very end. And we got deeper into um, the main thoroughfare of this castle. Up until then, we had been stuck on the outside in like the portcullis, walking around in there. And, oh, we discovered a sun demon. And now he's like our friend pet. And uh, we also have discovered the last few non 
evil survivors and it's like a few idiot guards, one ridiculous cook and a little boy who wants to be a hero who's the most annoying character ever created. And now we are finally going into the main area of the castle and we have um, to our right, I think, is the place where all the servants live and there is a like a museum. Or something like a tanning museum, museum to, to leather. I have no clue what it is. Um, and then to the left you mean is the, like uh, the uh, menagerie. Yeah, the menagerie. That's like a museum to tanning. And then yeah, totally. Same. Yeah, and then to the left is a forest uh, where I assume the king goes to hunt or whatever. Um, and there are various. I'm going to say NPCs missing throughout that we need to find in order to continue the adventure. And so. That is what happened last time. That's exactly what I just said. <laughs> You're right. I'm a fool. What a fool I, I am. Somehow sounds you know more organized for Jesse, though, you know? You know what? I think it's the whole male doctor, female doctor thing, I think. It's You're, like, you're just... next on the list, Jeff. And then me. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, yes, so um, when we last left off, you are walking towards the holy town of Servitude, which is the, the town inside of the castle walls, the palace walls. The palace compound is massive, and it encompasses much more than just the palace proper. And one of the other things that it encompasses is the holy town of Servitude, which is the dwelling place of all of the servants who live and work uh, within the castle itself. Of course, being a massive structure, you need a village in order to be able to, to serve and all of the necessary roles to keep the palace functioning. And so there was a town established immediately adjacent to the castle in order to make that happen. So um, uh, let's see, what, what, what do you see in front of you? Uh, if you remember, I believe there was a big tower. It's also on the map, which, by the way, yo, shout out to the dude who's recreating the map. It's so cool. Um, yep. Uh, there's a giant tower. There's the menagerie. Yes. And then there is the blacksmith that we're supposedly yeah, going there's, to. Yeah, you, you asked where you could find weapons. And, the armory, uh, right? Uh, Rael, the woman who was sort of like in the charge of the camp that you just came out of, uh, pointed you to an armory in the southeast of the holy town of Servitude, past a bell tower. Um, Didn't she wanted us to find her friend? His name started with like an A, right? What yes, was it? they they sent um, a runner out to go gather information. Let me right. see if I can remind you exactly what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, his name is Abelmar. Almar, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we were going to try and go to the armory and then go find him in the forest, right? Yeah. Oh, he's, we, got, he's actually, we got like a huge argument discussion about this in the last episode, what we should he's do. He's in the northeast of um, of the holy town of Servitude. So he's, he's not out in the forest. Mm. You learned of another person who went into the forest, Exemplar um, Venara, who could maybe tell you more about what's going on with the magics that uh, have been released and are impacting the, um, the, the, the dome and the town and what's going on. Um, and I think last when we last left off, you had chosen to head towards the holy town of Servitude. You were looking directly at an arch, uh, the top of which um, had the, the the letters spelling out servitude over top of it. So let me tell you what you see in front of you at the immediate moment that you're looking. So uh, you have just walked under an archway in the walls that separate the parade grounds, which the camp was uh, like situated at the very entrance of the parade grounds, separate the parade grounds from the town itself. In front of you stretches a street wide with wealthy buildings on each side. You see marble facades along each side of the street that are pure white, but now um, have been burnt and smoked and there's black streaks all across it. The entire interior of the palace compound, I will remind you, bears all of the scars of a war that was fought and lasted until about four months ago. So you see that here as well. There are doors that are barricaded. Um, there uh, is, is like random furniture that's strewn out and destroyed in the center of the street. 
So you see, uh, like fairly close to you, there's a stool lying on its side and a bench a little ways further, um, a couple of uh, like beds and tables and stuff. Some stuff is burning or smoldering off on the left-hand side. And down the center of this street, the street is wide. There's two lanes going one, one in each direction. And the center meridian is marked by letters inscribed in bright teal tile. A, S, T, etc. continuing on down the street. There are a number of balconies along the sides of the street uh, and far down the way uh, a bed has been tossed out into the street on its side from one of the balconies. Um, I think we saw a white raven sitting up on top of the archway with white fire burning in its eyes, but I think someone like yelled at it and it flew away. It Is flew away, it? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this raven, you saw it, it flew away. That's what you see. Tell me what you do. Can we look to see if the bodies in the streets are bodies that are just going to be like, oh, hey, I'm actually a demon man. I'm going to eat you. <laughs> can we Can we investigate that? Yes. Uh, how do you do this? Uh, Can't I uh, detect? <clears throat> oh, yeah. I think detect I can. What? Sorry. <clears throat> it's happening again. Your life your your voice is still coming back from from magic. I know, basically. Darling, do I have to take magic or not? Just answer the question. <laughs> from here on out, I'm just gonna like lip sync and Jeff is gonna do my voice. <laughs> I play Knights of the Old Republic later. If you want to tune in, it'll be a great show. But right now, I'm on a show here, okay? <laughs> I grab my flaming skull and I shoot it. What do you want? Yeah, you just shoot everybody with Eldritch Blast. Um, I'm trying you have to detect find magic, right? Uh, yeah, I have, I have Eldritch Sight. Yeah. What does it look like when you, like... Focus your eldritch sight. Is there any physical impression? Um, can we say uh, my eyes turn into goat eyes because it's yeah, metal absolutely. as fuck? That's dope <laughs> as shit. Yeah, absolutely. You're gonna make me go look yeah. up what the hell goat eyes look like right now. Don't. They're nightmarish. They're like they are nightmarish. With like, they're like horizontal barbells almost, right? Mm -hmm, it's yeah. Real weird. Yeah. Bro, yeah, Armos ever gets magic, I'm pulling out a baby-headed tentacle monster. Oh, they are crazy looking. I've never yeah, looked at goat eyes before. Oh yeah, they're weird. No. I, uh, do you just like step forwards from the group and, and tell tell everybody to wait? No. I just cast a glance. Yeah, as and, as you're yeah. walking. Um yeah. that gives you the ability to detect magic within 60 feet, right? Uh it's I don't know the range of detect magic. I didn't put it on my slot. I just wrote, oh, you can cast detect magic at will, but I didn't actually Let's write down. Look. I think detect call magic feet. as well is limited by range. 30 There's feet. There's no particular reason for me to ask this question. I just am very curious about it. Uh, it says thir 30 feet. Really? Um, Damn. Yeah, yeah so right. it says... 30 feet, it's a concentration up to 10 minutes. So I guess if I, it would it'd follow me, like, you know, as I move forward, it would come with me. Cool. So I'm going to pull you onto this map and place out your... In my head cannon, she speaks and goat during this time as well. <laughs> mm. uh. <laughs> Holy fuck, goats are stupid, man. Look at that dumb eyeball. <laughs> Yeah, it's a weird, <laughs> it's a weird eyeball. eyeball. Yeah, it's it's like that and a puffer fish has that eye, and that's it. Goats and puffer fish. Um, <laughs> I uh, I'm seeing you as having no hit points. Same thing for Sarek. So go ahead and restore yourself to your. Property. GG, start off the new year with the death. I'm seeing you as starting. I'm seeing you're dead. Uh, so we're gonna leave you dead <laughs> yeah. this time. In your yeah. recap, you forgot to say that you have died. <laughs> We didn't uh, level I don't up remember since that. last time or anything, right? No, we no, didn't. No, you have not no, leveled up. It's been a little that. while since you've found a tier of saloon. Uh, right. Feel free to place yourselves wherever you would like to be within this, this red is a, square this that I'm is drawing a trap. Now. <laughs> This is, this is. <laughs> you don't think it's just a non-dangerous <laughs> area? Totally where you normal walk street. Freely? No. That I have drawn out meticulously, spending a lot bodies. of my time. 
to draw here. Uh, Jesse, I think uh, chat can't see. There we go. Yeah, you, you just took found the magical bag of coming. I'm gonna stick right behind, uh, just Aramos and just not get killed. All right, There's cool. Everybody's everybody's positioned themselves where they want to be. Armoros. Sure. Why do I keep saying sure. it's because you're a three musketeer? Is that why I keep saying Aramos. that? No, I'm not a musketeer. Right. Armoros. Aramos. Armos. Amoros. Andros. <laughs> it's all the same. It's all the same. Marilio. Okay. You're just like uh, every other man, Jesse. You just define me by a name that you've decided in your head, and then you just tell it. So what? I uh That's goddamn right. As you gaze with your your is that magic, a jello shot? What is what does it look like to your eyes when you're using your 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 detect magic vision? Goats. She already said that, Stephen. Not and what now does her eyes look like? Does it does the vision she's seeing from her eyes look any different? Um, Still goats. <laughs> she just sees goats everywhere. Yeah. I I would say that it's probably like um similar to like infrared vision. Cool. Or like, yeah. Yeah, so Something you see like, like heat glow off of anything that has a magical. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, Granted, as, as like you... the bodies that reanimate, I don't think those are magic, but just in case. Yeah, as, as you go here, you don't see any magic um, as, as you walk. You, you don't see any. Um, so detect magic. Let me just uh, real quick make sure that I understand the spell. Did a lot of checking scene for a guy that she can't see magic from. You know what I'm um, saying? He's like, oh, it's 31 feet away from you. Shucks. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, what do you know? Yeah, uh, from, from right here, you don't, you don't see any magic. What, what do y'all do? Uh, I hit the invisible ghost thing that you have trapped, I guess, with the sword. Oh, shit. Well, you know, uh, make an attack roll. And... Got it. You say we have to be in this box, though, right? Yeah, uh, you know, as of right now, you're just positioning yourselves like as as if you were just reaching this portion of the the road. Hmm. So, what, do we, what do we do? For clarity's sake, <clears throat> obviously, all the things like that look like a bench or a a table flipped over. That's just stuff on the street. The yeah, like debris and stuff. The fire, the campfire that's there is what yep. exactly? It's like debris that's smoldering as if it was gotcha. on fire. Gotcha. Okay. Like All right. Burned. All right. Um, also, All incidentally, right. these black boxes are the balconies that are like up above the road of sure. the houses on each side. So like you can be under these. The, the gray boxes are like the porches of, of the houses. There's a door in the center of each of these. All right. Most of All the doors are black and they broken. And, yeah. You said most He's... of the doors are broken and stuff. Yeah, like, like you know, destroyed no or there. barricaded or you know, like these places have obviously been destroyed and abandoned for quite some time. I think I'll state the obvious: it's too quiet here, right? Yeah. What did the rest of you? How did the rest of you react to Armorosa's statement? Uh. Sarek looks in the building on the left. You, you just okay, the, there, the Jesse, door is um, like, like peeps in, not like go, like just looks, just looks in to see if there's anything inside or any sign. Uh, you can't like, actually, you can't actually see in the building at the moment. There's a look uh, what looks like an oak door. It looks like it used to have been painted like a gaudy orange color. There's like strips of paint, but they're all blackened and charred and have peeled off of the door. Um, the door like has one small crack in it where the, like the wood split as it burned. Oh my God, we're in Oakland. Are you going to just like, are you just like putting your eye right up against uh, it? Sirk tries to open the door. Okay. Um, you, you like shove against the door, pull against the door. You mess with the doorknob. It feels barred. Uh, he turns around to everyone else like, yeah, it was worth a try. And then goes back to the group. We should just like start walking, right? We can't avoid yeah, this. <laughs> I think we just walk and let the track get sprung. <laughs> Okay. 
can <laughs> sorry I feel uh, like Gendo. historically me I would say I should like go ahead and scout out what's going on but I always yeah when that I was happens. like can one of us go ahead <laughs> literally a spear will just hit you in the head and you'll get eaten by rats off the camp <laughs> <laughs> or a gelatinous cube will just suck me in um, so, next to Ankara's um, sacrifice we now know it's dangerous I, uh, okay. are, 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 Ankara rather are you the one who wants to like try and, and sneak ahead and try to see if there's anything dangerous happening uh yeah, can you turn into something yeah. and like animal your way through this? I could. Honestly, yeah. I'm not sure I could take the sight of Ankara getting killed again. Let's just go as a team. <laughs> Ar oh, well, Armrose and I could go ahead because what happens is I always end up just being overpowered. So yeah. if you're with me, we could just. I'm not even joking. I'm, I'm, he actually is uncomfortable with it. So he, he does go for it. Okay. Okay, weapons. cool. Yeah. Are you trying to be particularly stealthy or are you just walking? Armros is not a stealthy guy. He just All right, stops cool. forward. And Kara, yeah. please well, roll a dexterity well, saving throw. Oh, Lord oh, Jesus. God. Is she going to die in my arms? Probably. We all, we all knew this was going to happen. We all we knew. Was I knew. Happen. That's why I was like, you know what? Let's just get it over with. I'll start walking. We Here all it is. knew. Everyone, there was palpable silence. People were like, we don't yeah, want to do anything, wanted... Steven. We don't want to do anything. He's just going to kill us. Nobody wanted to do it. And you, we okay. know this is gonna happen. Oh my god! All right, Stephen, what's my fate? So, like, you know how when you encounter, you know, sometimes you encounter a bear trap and you get a stick and you maybe try to like poke it and see if you can disarm it. I'm really sorry, Britt, but you're our stick. <laughs> I'm the you're stick. The stick. I'm really the sorry. Trap is the Actually, I misled you. I, uh, you see tiny goats standing on top of every letter in the middle of the. Are you actually serious <laughs> with the goats? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. You see glowing red aura uh, around each of the letters in the middle of the road. The, the letters formed out of blue tile glow. Um, and let's see. Uh, is this learn... real? Is this a real thing? Yes, it is a real thing. You learn the school of magic is evocation. So Do they, are they glowing the, the whole lion. time or are they yes. glowing because they moved forward? No, they're, they're glowing the whole time. You saw okay. this before they decided to move. Indiana Jones. Okay. The word of God. Yes. Uh, and and Britt, as you walk forwards without any comment from Aya, um, your foot like kicks uh, like... I don't know, like a, like someone's hand or something like that. Like right, like there's like dead bodies occasionally. Like most of them are like half rotted or or like you know uh, have charred or whatever. You kick someone's hand and it skitters across the eye that you're standing right next to here. And as it skitters across, like electrical sparks discharge up out of the tiles, forming the letter I, and blast this hand and it goes flying through the air. It's not like a lightning bolt level of blasting, but it's definitely Label. a good solid shock. Armors but nothing looks bad at happens to me. I yeah, just but see and, this and, happen. Yeah, you see this happen, and like you were about to step on the letter, and then you you oh. sort of like back up, and you're like, no, oh, what? Nope, 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 oh, nope. Okay, yeah. Well, don't step on these letters, guys. <laughs> Does everyone else see this? Am I the only one who notices, guys? Did you see this? And Cara, walk behind me, please. Wait, but and I just I'll pipe up from the back and be like, right. So the letters are magical. <laughs> <laughs> and you just see him, me standing there with goat eyes. Probably Wait. should have mentioned that. We didn't Probably don't touch him. How do we know that they all do that? Shouldn't we test and see what each one does? Does the I and the Y both shoot electricity? I can't hear you all the way back there, Sarek. I'm talking very loudly, so maybe you, you hello? No, there's like there's like a wall of coward just just right in front of you. It's... <laughs> hello? Can you hear my thoughts now? Perhaps um, if you stepped out from behind the wall of cowardice and came forward with us. So why don't as... you try one back there? Yeah, can I take a, a, like a body letter. part and throw it yeah. at the Y and see what happens? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You throw it at the Y, it, ha it lands on the Y and goes skittering across it. Electricity shoots out and, and sends sparks through the, the foot that you tossed across it and it goes flying off. Looks, <laughs> looks like they all do it. Boy, now we now we know. Good. If only we could have taken like some kind of questionnaire to ask really weird ethical questions about whether or not they would light up or how we would react to it. Yes, yes. 
I would have taken You'll that. You'll have to take notes. <laughs> would Wonderful. you have taken it or would you have given it, Jesse? I mean, both. Both. Yeah. As as you, walk, <laughs> as you walk down the road, um, a set of dresser drawers come flying off of one of the balconies. What? The far end to crash into the street explosively, just shattering on on the street. Let me let me show you. Uh, they land dresser drawers. Dresser drawers. You know, like what you would oh. put clothes in. They land here at at this spot right here. And that's when Casper came out of the campfire and said, "Hi!" And you hear a voice from up above shout, "There's nothing. The scepter isn't in here." From above, you said? Oh, one of the yes, balconies. Yes, from the balcony above where this yeah. dresser drawer fell down. Oh. Does it sound like the voice of the guy that conned us? No. It is definitely a different voice. You remember his voice? It is not his voice. Okay. Sarek, like, points. There's people up there! <laughs> Guys! Guys, there's people up there! Should we go talk to them? I want to see if these people can be friends with us. They I'm sound sure aggravated, sound. which probably means they aren't one of the dark-eyed. That's a good point. Everybody yes. we've met so far has been a massive asshole, but I really applaud all of your optimism. I'm and just I'm saying. also morbidly interested in seeing how this pans out. So yes, yeah, Sarah. If someone tries to barter with us, I will kill them. But yes, let's go. Why don't you go talk to them? And and Cara, do you want to come with me and go talk with mm -hmm. them? Yes. Can you just come up here? <laughs> You're gonna have to come up here. <laughs> oh, okay. Sark very, very slowly just starts to make his way up. Excellent. Okay. Uh Let's see. Arm roast is one and cars two. I is three. Sarx four. Oh look, Armoros, as you as you yeah. stand waiting for your companions to join you, uh -huh. uh, two heavy crossbow bolts come flying in your direction. Jokes on you, Steve, because neither of them hit. It's try True. again. Neither of them hit. Uh, I think both of them, well, one of them sticks in your shield, and the other goes flying wide <laughs> and lands in this pile of burning rubble and catches on fire and. It's just kind of sad. Uh, and it, from behind the, the bed that's turned up on its side, you okay. see two people standing up with uh, crossbows. Do they have one black here, eyes, Stephen? One here. They do have black eyes. Their skin is veined with like shadowy substance. They snarl as they point at you. And I need all of you to roll for initiative. Two arms, friends. There's some of those black-eyed people in front of us. Black-eyed peas, even. Lame. No, uh, no, no, no. Stay. Oops. <laughs> Don't fuck with my whore. I miss you. That was perfect. Thank you. I'm, I'm like Fergie. You they are. call me the Fergie mm -hmm. of, of Twitch. It's true. Yeah. That is, that's <laughs> awkward around the office. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, Useless. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's on here. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's not what I want. That's a four. That's what I want. Twelve, that's a fifteen. Yeah, four. Pretty good, Perfect. right? And then... Mm -hmm. Oh. So, Steven, I have a crossbow. My question is, could I launch, instead of a bolt, my actual sword? What? Just fire your sword from your crossbow? Yeah. You know what? Let's <laughs> try. I would, I would happily let you try. Let's see if I get right. a natural 20. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Armoros, you are, do get to go first. Uh, now, these, these two enemies, these two thugs, thug one and thug two, up here at the top uh -huh. of the street, um, both of them have half cover from the, uh, from, from, from the, the bed that they're standing behind, which gives yeah. them a plus two to armor class. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to... Move my full 30, I guess, right? Is that what I move? Yeah. Or I can dash for 60, can I? Yes, but dashing is an action, so you can dash, but you won't be able to attack. Right. I assume 30 doesn't get me to him, though, is why I'm saying that, right? Well, let's see. 10, 20, 30. No. Then I will dash right up into their grill. Damn. Double move, and the whole time I yell, 
Where is the love? No, Jesse, not that one. I'm just so I'm going to give you the most generous movement across these blue tiles, Armoros. But since you are dashing, you are going to need to make two dexterity saving throws. DC 12. Ooh. Against these? I can't step yes. around it? Well, like the, the dexterity saving throw represents your attempt to step around these things. Oh. I guess I should open up my character sheet and hit the dexterity saving throw button. You should indeed. 18. Okay. You're fine. 13. And 13. You're fine. You you uh, run across the, the median. You dash across these tiles, not stepping on them. And then, from above you, Armoros. Okay. Blonk. You see uh, a, a, another, uh, another person lean out over the top. And um, he fires a longbow down at you. Ooh, a 21 hits. Mm -hmm. So he deals you 1d8 plus 1 piercing damage, 9 piercing damage, and he has martial advantage because you're adjacent to one of his allies. And so he gets to deal you an additional 2d6 damage. You take an additional 7 for a total of 16. Okay. That's it. Uh, thug number one, let's see, he's standing right next to you, so he makes two melee attacks with his mace. One and two, both of which clang off of your raised shield. attack. Jesse, you see all of this happen. Uh, they're, they're fairly far away. Yeah, um, can I move up uh, to the third, like go to here, and take a shot? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I'll try and hit uh, Thug 1, I guess. I think that might be too far for you to move. 1, 2, 3, That's right. 4, 5, 6. You need to move, like, this is as far as you can move, and then... Oh, but you can take the dash action to move that far if you want. And then you can still fire, because you're using your cunning action as a rogue. Sure, okay, yes. <laughs> yep, uh... cool. And then you're firing at, at Thug number 1? Yes, and I have no advantage against any of them because they're on us. So yeah, okay. Uh, well, so you, if you, yeah, if you're firing at Thug Number One, um, he's he's no longer covered from your current position by this bed. So you have a clear line of sight. You're only targeting his armor class, and he is adjacent to Armoros, which means you get your sneak attack. Yo, so, excellent. Then, okay. Uh, yeah, short bow. This summer gun. Twenty four nails him. Roll your damage. Literally. And then you get 1d6 worth of sneak attack damage. Minus eight. Not bad. All right, Ankara, what do you do? Uh, I think I'm just going to run up and join Sarek and do a short bow as well. At the nice. Let's Yo, see. teamwork. Look at us. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. Oh. That crit. Oh, Start damn. 2019 off strong. <laughs> Get him. And Kara with the most 20s and 1s of, Woo. I think, our entire team. So nine <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Someone actually like calculated out stats for our last episode. For our last, it was uh, really disappointing. Was, I don't. Yeah, I saw awesome. that. <laughs> I looked at those and was like, boy, I'm terrible at this. <laughs> I, I should just stop. All right. Let's see. Um, yeah, this second thug, yeah, totally, is going to um, move up here on the other side of this uh, crashed um, uh, dresser drawers and also underneath the, the, the um, balcony Sorry. that's right next to you, Armoners. And then he takes two swings at you, and because you are adjacent to one of his allies, he has advantage on both of these what? attacks. Here's attack number one, ooh, with a 14, and attack number two with an nope. 18, neither of which is strong enough to beat nice. your heavy armor. Now we're back around to you, Jeff. What do you do? Question, Steven. Since it's yep. season two, there will be questions. Excellent. I have action surge, but I also have second wind. Can I take two attacks with my action surge and then also second wind as a uh, bonus let's... action? Let's see exactly what kind of action second wind is. Oh, when the question stumps the DM. What do you know? Uh, oh, so and how the tables anymore. have turned. Or the bed. <laughs> I, of course, being renowned around the internet for knowing all 
D and D flawlessly and never getting them wrong. <laughs> 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 All right, so um, <laughs> Jeff, I'm in a bad yeah. mood, but y'all's like energy is contagious, and it's upsetting me that it's like... I hate that everybody is so happy and they're making me happy, and it's terrible. <laughs> it's upsetting to me. I'm over here like uh, Dungeons and Dragons is the worst game. <laughs> Jeff, your second win is a bonus action. Your accent surge gives you a second full action. So you can use your attack action to attack. You can use second wind as a bonus action. And then you can accent surge to get another action and do cool. whatever you want with it. Answer is yes, you can do all of those. Thank you. Then my initial action shall be to swing at the wounded thug. Cool. Ugh. The wounded thug, fortunately for you, an 11 strikes the creature. Oh, it's only baby. wearing weak leather armor. 12. 12 damage. God. <laughs> All right. What's your second? He's not dead. Son of a... All right. Uh, <laughs> second win Okay. is 1d10 plus fighter level, and we're level 2. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to heal myself. D10... Plus two. Oh my god. Yeah, well, there you go. Dice! <laughs> I think your second wind has statistically rolled terribly. I'm not a healer. All right. Uh, I guess I'll swing at thug number one again. All right. Uh... Don't whiff it. Oh, nice. Roll it. Six damage. Six damage puts him down. The... He falls to the ground dead. I've befallen one of them, but I could use some healing. Fortunately for you, the guard sergeant pokes his head out from up, up upstairs and fires his longbow down at you. Oh Bounding. my god. Yeah. Critting yeah. you, and then also using his martial damage to deal an extra 46. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, 26 damage, armor. Does it have to double my current health or my, my starting health? It has to double your max health. It then has to I'm reduce you to a negative dead. value equal to... So you're, you're not dead. You're fine. I'm at minus 16. Cool. You're at, you're technically at zero because, uh, like, you're zero. at zero until you take, like, double damage or whatever. Like, uh, there's no negative value. I like this scene. I'm like, I need healing. <laughs> and I fall over. <laughs> hey, here's um, a stat for you guys. Who's been critted the most, by the way? Answer, it's me! <laughs> Wait, it's the armor. me! Uh, okay, um, thug number two takes aim at you, Sarek. Can I ask you a question uh, before yes. I get shot and killed? Um, these are not the guys who were talking. Are these different, no, or, or are these the same guys? Uh, it, the, the the person upstairs on the balcony, that's where the voice was coming from. You can't guarantee that it's the, the, the person who's up there, but that's where the voice was coming from. Uh, Sarek, it's actually your turn and then Brit. So, and this is the same balcony. All right, I just want to make sure that like the conver the balcony these guys are appearing from is the balcony we heard the conversation happening. Yes. So, so to set the scene for you, these two thugs are down on street level. Sure. Up above, there's this guard sergeant. He's got the, a longbow and he's shooting down on you from up on this balcony. That's where this dresser drawers was tossed from, and it's also where you heard the voice shouting from. Sure. Can I the balcony that is right next to me? Can I yeah. get into that building? Is that accessible? Uh, again, like this door has like uh, like a, a a big stone statue like crushed up against it. Okay. But, uh, there's there's two columns each holding up the balcony. I want to climb to the balcony. Okay. All right. I'm... So this is this will be an athletics test. It's it's challenging to shimmy your way up a column. It's a DC fourteen athletics check. And of course, you're climbing at half speed, so you're going to need to use your dash action to climb all the way up if you then want to make an attack. From I can do this. I can all do right. this. Nope, I can't Whoa. do this. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. Uh, nope. Sorry, if you start climbing, it's like the camera like is showing you climbing, climbing, like. And then like the camera zooms out, and you're like two feet above the ground. Do we? Did we miss? Stephen, we skipped bronze. Did we did we skip Bronze's turn? Yeah, she's Bronze, not on that. Yeah. Yeah, she's not on that turn. 
Wrong. She got like a. Two I honestly or rolled so shit she that I three. just. I thought I, I thought I was going to be it. waiting for a while. <laughs> uh, advanced add turn. We'll do that. You got a three. Cool. Uh, bronze. Mm -hmm. Let's return to your turn. Whoa, yeah, yeah. My turn is four. Redo, redo, no, my turn no, to no, redo, Jesse. <laughs> redo. Is her turn before I went down? Uh, no. Yes, your turn. Wait, what? Could have been before yeah, you. Yeah, you Redo, uh, redo, redo. <laughs> Sorry, I was like reading my spells. Bronze, we're, we're not going to retcon the, the actions because it's actually just too confusing. My brain can't fill it. But That's I'll let fair. you act now as if you had readied an action to do whatever you wanted to do now. So go That's ahead. That's fair. Go. I was over here like, oh, I hope you guys can't see that. I was over here like measuring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With God, the... uh, 60 I think you can five, see that. Yeah, I was like, oh. Yeah. And so I was reading all my abilities because some of them are 60 feet, but there's one that's 120. Um, and I was checking the distance on Hex too. Oh. Sorry about that. It was my fault. I missed my own turn because I was in a different different land. Um Okay, I think just furiously measuring. Just, ugh, just yeah, I was like, I was trying ugh. to see what I could do and what I couldn't do. Um, I also realized I have Tasha's hideous whispers, and I've, I've never used it. Oh, but that's its own thing. We'll we'll come to that later. Um, or Tasha's hideous laughter. Sorry. Um, Did you use that on one thing. I, I think I used, used it, it on, like like the wyvern. Yeah, I think I used it like once forever ago and never touched it again. Um. I'm going to I'm going to move up and then I'm going to cast an eldritch blast towards this guard the the, the one, one on the balcony Yeah that cool. one Yeah and then um using my bonus action I'm going to put a hex on him as well Cool so you hex him first and then you eldritch blast him what yes. uh, ability check do you want to put at a disadvantage uh, let's do dexterity. Sounds great. Would that have affected his attack against me? No. Mm -mm. Attacks are not no. checks. Yeah. And we also found out from... They're not saving to, throws either. Yeah, it's not saving throws yep. either. Um, okay, so... All right, so he is hexed officially. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then I'll do the Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Ooh, is that that's a fifteen? Mm -hmm. And it's just versus armor class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, un unfortunately, this guy is wearing um, he's wearing chainmail. He mm -hmm. has a shield strapped to his back, but because he's using a longbow right now, it's not giving him uh, any any armor. So, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, your blast bounces off of his chainmail and doesn't appear. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. All, All right. right, that's you. Uh, did you, did you, have you moved where you want to? Um, no, I'll do that. I'll move cool. here. And then, uh, now, Sarek, it's your turn. Go for it. I climb the thing. No, you don't. You already failed. Your land, your, your, your butt is on the ground. Do I, do I get to do anything else? I mean, that was my movement action, right? Can so I still... that was your move. Great. Then you have, you still have cunning action, so you haven't spent it dashing because you All right. Didn't. Yeah. Sarek uh, you, tries you to climb your... this, this column. And then just like ee and slips and falls back down. And he looks around and uh, definitely notices everyone noticed him fail and is still just like, no one saw that. And then makes a quick, can I dash to behind cover here? Yes. Yep, absolutely. And then I want to take a shot at one of the guys on the balcony. Cool. Yeah, there's only one guy on the balcony. It's the guard sergeant. The other guy's down below. Gotcha. It's a little confusing, but that's a little. Okay. Let's do this. Uh, there's yes. like, it, you know, there's stuff in the way. It's really hard. It's difficult. Your arrow goes oh, flying flawlessly from your bow and then thuds into the balcony, sending a shower of marble down to rain on Armoros's uh, dead body. Uh, and Kara, <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I'm going to run up behind that table as well and cool. uh, shoot at that guard sergeant nice. with my short bow. So you're all both like taking a knee behind this table, trying to get I cover thought, from it. Can we like turn it over? I wanted to push it over like they do in the action movies. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. You you definitely like this push and I'm like, ah, over and, then, and take yeah. cover behind it. Yeah, totally. Hell yeah. Ooh, 
Oh, unfortunately, that that distracts you enough. I shot the arrow, arrow into the table. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> wait, if I use healing word on Armros, does he? Does that work on him now that he's down? It does, yes. Right? Healing yeah, word is a and bonus that's a bonus action. action. So I will and do it's that. It's got a sixty foot range, so you do that. Yep. Let's do that. Um, With thirty. Let's go to this. Yeah, like I said, thirty. Yeah. <laughs> nice. One, one d four plus your spell casting modifier. Okay. Which I think is three. Yes. Nailed well, it. You gain six hit points. <laughs> cover consciousness. Nice. nice. Thank you so much. Thug number two attacks you twice, Armrose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> miss, miss. Missing you both times. Aya, now it's your official. Crits are nothing, turn. Steven. Get the out of here with that weak ass shit. All right? You're okay, not doing 26 so... damage, you're even trying. Um... Oh, I can move up, though. Right? Yes. Am I still too loud? Let me know. I have. My eyes turn into rabbit buttholes as I cast <laughs> the power of a flaming you hair. You sound jealous. Are you jealous? Flaming hair. Are what you jealous? Because spell. I know magic and you don't know that. Because you sound like you're kind of jealous. He's it's dead. not my fault I'm fabulous and that you're basic. <laughs> Girls are made of cinnamon and magic and boys are made of Some of us were just born with glitter in our veins, okay? <laughs> you should get that look at. <laughs> be fucked up. Um, I'm going to move up. I'm going to try to do something. So, well, I'll, I'll try to do it. We'll see how it goes. How far is the drop from the balcony? I know you've probably already covered it. It's 20 feet. 20 feet. And um, how, like, what kind of railing does it have? There is a railing. It's waist high. Uh, waist it's, high. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, ornate marble, like, curved columns that are shaped sort of yeah. like vases so there it's it's porous you can see through it you can okay. shoot through it but um it doesn't give cover but uh it it, it wouldn't like Sweet. someone couldn't just walk off uh, I... god damn it I, I i i know what you're trying could someone I know flail at. off because they're being assaulted <laughs> by Eventually, yes an it's army of, of butterflies, poisonous monarch <laughs> butterflies. That sounds horrible. poisonous monarchs. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I do mean poisonous, not venomous, because when you eat them, they're poisonous, but they don't have venom. Oh, so. interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do that. Awesome. If you know, Stephen doesn't cock block me. Do it. Do it Adam. <laughs> I'm I'm looking forward to this. Okay. DC 13 con save, six poison damage, and uh, move five feet in the direction if it can move and its speed is at least five feet. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. And it can it's move. Constitution save. You just have to hope it moves wow. in the direction. It got a 15 on its constitution save and therefore successfully uh, takes no damage and does not move. Cock blocked. <sighs> got him. Armrose, what do you do? Well, Steven, in your deep mind gameplay here with our over-the-top view, I know that you've hidden the fact that I can step beneath the balcony where your fucking god spear guy with a bow and arrow cannot shoot me anymore, correct? Oh, 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 oh. You're directly below the god spear guy who can shoot you. Awesome. And then I will take my swing at thug number, at thug number two. Fantastic. Uh, tell me, eight hits, right? No, unfortunately not. <laughs> Eight misses. But uh, no, no, true no. to true to to reality here, the guard sergeant up above cannot see you, cannot attack at you, and so he shoots at Aya. Getting a 21. Bitch, fucking wish you would. Wish you would. <laughs> Fight me IRL. Fight me in these streets. Random arrow man. You take five damage. I fucking lift my finger up, my middle finger, and fire shoots out of it, and I oh cast fucking hellish rebuke on this bitch. Oh, nice. Okay, <laughs> yes. Uh, and yes, uh, you have no allies next to you, so you cannot, you don't take extra damage from his martial advantage, so you only take five. Yes. And then you hellish rebuke. Cast it. 
Yeah, it says you point a finger. I think you yeah. know which finger I'm yeah, pointing I'm, at him. I'm well aware. <laughs> the pinky finger. DC 13, dexterity saving throw. All right. He gets a 15, which means he takes half damage. Mm -hmm. It's 12, damn, so he takes six damage. Pretty killer, honestly. Uh, that's that's Armrose. I'm just moving you out of the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> By the six. I don't like this. I don't Whoa. like this dude. Jeff, do you like yeah, this dude? Yeah, Push him off the balcony. Just push, push him off, off the balcony. The balcony. <laughs> I mean, just for the rest of the game, just throw people off the balconies for everything. Make it look like an accident. Uh, Make it look like a domestic. It's the winning strategy that y'all have a point. Um, Hope he lands on his head. Aya, what does it look like when your your hellish rebuke triggers? So, obviously, I get pierced by this arrow, yeah. and then you just see Aya go, "Mother fuck!" And then she just puts up her middle <laughs> finger, and like her eyes look all like angry. The goat eyes are gone, and it's almost like flame. You don't see a reflection of flames, and then he just poofs up in the flames. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, in the in the smoke above him that that comes off of his body, you see writhing black tendrils of smoke uh, that seem to form tentacles, and then they vanish as the as the fire dies. Nice. Sarek and Ankara, it's your turn. What do you do, Sarek? Mm -hmm. You're you're kneel, knelt down behind this this uh, this table. Yeah, I want to shoot the guy who just got caught on fire with like tentacles. I wanna... Yep. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I wish I could do any of that. <laughs> But I'll take that 23, though. Ooh. Oh, damn. Yes, you hit. Boop. Four damage. You know? Can I use any Definitely. of my, uh, you know, because he was on fire and he's all messed up. And I'm standing no. right next to Ankara. Can I use my sneak attack? No. Unfortunately, you need an ally within five feet of him. And he's 20 feet up on a balcony. So no allies of yours are within five feet of him. Or you need to be attacking with advantage, which you can get if you hide. But I was hiding I, behind the uh, table. You did not, in fact, take the hide. Excuse me. You didn't take the hide action. And therefore, you weren't actually hiding. Got him. Got, got him. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, but now you, you can take the... Uh, all right. <laughs> you can take your cunning action to hide right now if you'd like. Yeah, I'm gonna hide behind this damn table. Okay, give me a give me a stealth roll. Stealth, baby. Stealth is one of the few things I can do. Yeah. Yeah. Stealth. Maybe not. Maybe yeah, no, you get you got eleven. All yeah, right, that's, that's pretty good. Is it like and a Cara. pretty good hide? It's like they can kind of <laughs> see you, like your head a little bit, but you're. I mean, if it was a child, they wouldn't be able to see you. You just got your eyes like, <laughs> like just right here, just like really obviously like. Wait, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I like shout out like I'm hiding, guys. You can't see me. Right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, and Kara, what do you do? Uh, yeah, I shoot my short bow at the. Yeah. Oh, nice. Roll Dying your damage. For he dies. Yes. Yes. Your arrow goes through his eye. Teamwork. He falls. He falls off of the balcony and shouts, "Ah!" He Wilhelm. His name was he Wilhelm. Straight up Wilhelm screams. Yeah. Poor Wilhelm. He died. How he lived, screaming. Nice. <laughs> Bug number two takes two swings at you, Armrose. I'm sure he's missing both of them. Oh, he hits one of them. Damn. Yep. For eight bludgeoning damage. Back Jesus. to the ground I go. <laughs> just straight down. You're filling your role, Armros. I, uh, you see Armros just get dropped by this thug. What do you do? Um, so if I understand correctly, I can use a bonus action to move the hex to somebody yes. else if they get dropped to zero points before the spell ends. So yes. um, I'm going to like trace a ruin in the air with my hands and kind of shift it to the next thug over. Yes. And then um, that's actually, I, I think I've used all of my spell slots because I used Hex and Hellish Rebuke. So uh, when, when you use your bonus action, it doesn't take a spell slot. So I think you have two spell slots. So I think you have used both of your level one spell slots for right now. But mm -hmm. doing that movement of the Hex doesn't cost a spell slot. Oh, OK. Sweet. So you're able to do it. Right, OK. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, hit this dude with a Eldritch Blast. 
and hope that I actually hit. Fire it up. Be nice. You got a clear line of sight. A 17 nails him in the chest for all your damage. 13 force damage. Now with the correctly applied, um, what is it? What's your what's your Eldritch invocation? Uh oh, my hex. Wait, oh, yeah. Uh, it's the sorry, I wrote it down. <laughs> Agonizing blast. Agonizing blast. Yeah. Minus 13, mm -hmm. and you have Hex on the him, so now you can deal, what, 1d6 extra damage? Yeah, I have it put in there as a spell, just so That's it totally rolls it for fine. me. Roll 3 necrotic damage. Very good. No sweat. Armoros, I need a death saving throw from you. Oof. One fail. One fail. <laughs> Guard Sergeant is dead, meaning that we've looped back around to Sarek and then Ankara. Go ahead, Sarek. All right. Um, now I'm going to oh, use my sneak attack. And let's gonna... see if he noticed you. Perception. Passive Not... perception of 10, which means that you successfully hid. You're attacking with advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's take this guy out. I'm going to blop him with a short bow <laughs> from downtown. Uh, 15 hits him. Roll your damage. Shoop. Five damage plus your 1d6 sneak attack. Four, nine. Not bad. And Kara? Yeah, I'm just going to shoot him with my uh, short bow again. Let's awesome. blop him. Let's blop, blop him to death. Blop him. <laughs> I, think, I think your short bow's... Uh, your your arrow sticks in this broken, shattered um, uh, dresser drawers that landed in the street. Uh, and Carl, roll a perception test. For boom, me, boom, please. pal, man. Boom, <laughs> boom, pal. I was so impressed with Sarek's short bow. What do you mind me roll perception? Yeah, roll perception. Oh yeah, I'm Ankara, very aware you, where my arrows went. <laughs> as you as this arrow hits this uh, this um, this dresser drawers, you hear like uh, something metallic uh, sort of clattering around inside of it. Maybe like a, a coin or uh, some small metal object, something like that. Yep. Uh, let's see, thug number two. It's just gonna mm, ah mm, yep cool. Thug number two running this away. He makes uh, one, two dexterity saving throws. Let's see. One, two. Ooh, Ooh. failing that second oh. one. Taking roll 1d6. Taking five shock damage as he steps directly on the upper leg of the H. That's minus five. Um, and uh, this functions like shocking grasp, so this thug has also lost his reaction. But he still takes two swings at Aya. One, two. The second one hitting. The 17. Dealing you seven damage, Aya. It's your turn to respond. How do you react to this guy just charging across the, the street at you, Aya? Um, I'm going to stab him. Yeah. yeah. With my little nice. cane sword. Cane sword um, as opposed to that dagger that you picked up? Oh, yeah, I do have that dagger, but now I feel like that's a bait because I never trust the GM. Do it. Stab that man. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, it's a plot <laughs> point. I'm kind of waiting for one of you. The Fang of Dahaka? Rose okay, Bell yeah. has run way too many games, so she understands all the <laughs> No, I don't. Stab um, that man with that dagger. Okay, I'm going to take out the, the, it's like what, serpentine dagger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to just fucking from hell's heart i, I stab at the wow. bastard man stab that wow. man wow. stab that man i just have it down as a default dagger him. okay yep 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 roll it five damage what does it look like when you slay this man with the fang of dahaka it looks he, burst into he gold, just dealt think, a lot of damage to me <laughs> so you almost see like a strange maniacal state so like when i stabs him she like goes straight for like this nice fleshy part that the you know where no nobody ever protects this part, which is kind of silly. And um, and then you you see her like stab him, and the dude immediately goes down. But then you don't see her stop. She just yeah, kind of continues, yeah, she's, she's and you just hear the fleshy thudding. It's the calf, he, you know, You're just like stabbing him in the calf over. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Laughing maniacally. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. 
uh, you, you <laughs> eliminate this guy. With go eyes. <laughs> Laughing with eyes. Bad man. Bad man. I'm watching her do this, and I'm just so happy that she seems to be so happy. Bad man. Stop. Stop. He's already dead. <laughs> it's what the bitch deserves. Oh, God. Steven, I want to go to those drawers. <laughs> okay, cool. So hang on. Uh, we're gonna mark ten minutes off of the clock. That's that's the way this works. Clock advances. Steven, my group's stupid, so let's just pretend they they healed me and I get back. In, I was right? gonna say I feel yeah. bad because oh I God. said the drawers, and then you were my second thought after that. And I'm then so with yeah. the ten minutes, you are able to um, uh, Armoros back to one hit point. So Armoros, you stand up. You've got one HP. Um, you can cast spells. Yeah. You could take a ten minute rest in order to like spend some hit dice. Uh, that's a short rest, so Aya, you would regain your spell slot if you took that ten minute rest. Uh, we have to because I'm at one health, yeah. so I'm gonna take a ten minute rest. Okay, so you. Take I hit a myself for a critical two. Good lord, you can spend up to both of your hit dice. Well, I'll do that. See, let's see what the next one is here. It's an eight. So you oh, you, you got ten. Can I? Perchance, um, share one plus two plus eight, Stephen is 11. Share some tobacco with him yeah, what, while we what rest because what does that do again? Let's take our rations. You have to tell us stuff about your tobacco. life. I have so, wine um, and I have rations. So, yeah, rations if you share rations, anyone who spends hit dice to heal may re roll the amount that they healed and take the higher of the two rolls. I shall, really yeah, I shall do that. Yeah, I shall do that to aid my practice. Tobacco, partner. fine liquor, or luxuries such as wine. Each of you may tell a short tale from your past, and if you do, you gain inspiration. Mm. Nice. Uh, actually, um, sharing water, wine, or ale. So, just like if it's just a straight up just wine that you have, everyone gains temporary hit points equal to the level. That's kind of cool, too. Um, can I? I can only do one though, right? Nope, you can do all of them. What? Okay, in that case, yeah. I will lay out a spread. Um, because nice. I have rations and wine, and I'll awesome. mark that I've used. I'll uh one put use the of table them. that Sarek and I were behind. I'll put it back up and like nice. mm -hmm. wipe it off, yeah. and that's where we can <laughs> sit around. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. This is nice. This is nice. <laughs> and I'll pour out. You know, a little bit of wine for everybody in like tiny little cups that I have. Like they're they're like shot glass sized, nice. and you know, uh, hand around, um, non. Nice, yeah. Gar I garlic non. Garlic non. Oh, garlic. God, it's so good. <laughs> yes. Best rations ever. It's what I've got. So. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, in my head. Armros, you may re-roll both of your hit dice. So your yeah. first reroll applies to your first hit dice. Your second reroll applies to your second hit dice. You take the higher of the two pairs. Okay. Seven's higher than a two, so I'll take yep. that. And then five the is lower than, than eight. Five. So you, you heal Plus seven, five. eight, so that's 15. But I start at one, so I'm at 16. Nice. And I, uh, do you want to spend hit dice as well while you're... Yes. Cool. And of course, you should re-roll on the off chance you roll. Ooh. There you go. Yeah, you gain you gain ten hit points, Aya. Sweet, awesome. And then how no, many yeah. temporary? We oh, we get temporary. gains temporary hit points, and there's a slot on your character sheet just under your current hit points to put temporary hit points. Now, whenever you take damage, it damages your temporary hit points first, and any damage beyond the temporary HP spills over into your current HP pool. When, when we consider temporary hit points, you always gain the highest number of temporary HP. So if you get like a spell that gives you five temporary HP, you just have five. You don't have seven, for example. But that's the way this works. So huh. nice. You, you sit down, you share a light repast. Um, and Kara, not in Kara, sorry, I, uh, um, did you mark off? Yeah, so uh, mark down your wine and rations so to strike them off. How many hit points do we get? Temp hit points? 
Uh, Aya, yes, you got 10 hit points. No, temporary hit points. How many no. did we get? Yeah. Oh, temporary Sorry. hit points. You, you each got two. Great. Two. Thank you. Nice. Awesome. So you've got some extra space in your bag, Aya. Oh, actually, dang. And uh, Aya, I think uh, you're... You actually, technically, you should have been in combat. Really? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, incidentally, Jesse, yeah. would you please... Um, so this was your first combat of uh, the the visit here. Uh -huh. So actually, um, you haven't bought arrows in quite a while, right? Uh, last time, I believe the last thing I did when we were back at Saloon was make sure that I had arrows so that I wouldn't have to do okay, the roll cool. again. So uh, the way that we're running uh, with um, equipment, uh, like like uh, ammunition loss. So let's see, Jesse. Yes, you have only one slot of arrows, which is your short bow and arrows. So next combat, you're going to mm -hmm. have to test at the end of it to see if you're on your last. Sure. Okay. We'll remember that. Um, and Kara, you were using arrows as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, you brought a quiver of arrows with you, so you're totally fine. Yeah. All right, so your your short rest has passed. Let's, can I go look at sure. the? Can I go check the bodies for stuff? Yes. Uh, so as as you walk over to the bodies, as you finish this meal, the surface of the sun above you cracks. There's a distant boom from the sky, and purple veins erupt erupt across the surface of the sun, shining out purple from the reddened surface above you. Uh, as you, you search the bodies, you gain um, a number of gold pieces. Uh, you gain gold when you kill things. Let's take a look at how much. 3d8. Cool. There's this 14 uh, gold pieces, which is three gold each and then two left over. Uh, awesome. Yeah. And Kara, you were looking in this dresser drawers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, like, a couple of, like, shattered, uh, like, stoneware dishes that had, like, various, like, makeup powders and stuff inside of them. Uh, there's, like, a tattered wig that spills out. Uh, there's clothes in some of them. But the metal sound that you heard was a, um, a hefty iron key. Hmm. It's plain, it's unadorned, but you, you find an iron key. Huh. Okay. Now, uh, now that you have a moment to look around, are tell you a little bit more about what you see in your immediate vicinity. What other kind of clothes are in those drawers? Anything cool? Is there anything cool uh, in there? There's purple pantaloons with gold. And <laughs> there's uh, a ruffled puffy shirt with puffy sleeves and ruffles at the front. Um, there's, you know, like... Uh, Fancy clothes uh, of someone the you 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 imagine that Sarek would quite approve of this person's uh, uh, fashion sense. Is the ruffled shirt like a button down? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna put that on, but not button it up. I like. Okay, that. cool. You got this ruffled ruffled. Do I see her? Do I see her doing this? Absolutely. Unless you're like trying to hide this, are you? No. No. Oh, I like immediately me? go over to this dresser drawer and begin <laughs> yes. to look through because this is fabulous clothing. Yes, it's true. Uh, yeah. What What's like the fanciest, nicest item of that you find, uh, Sarek? What does it look like? A um, velour, uh, like overgarment, like a very nice, like kind of long jacket. Nice, a velour with, with a lot of like color. Oh, it is a uh, a regal purple with uh, mm. gold uh, <laughs> filigree. Filigree is that the word I'm looking for? Sure, it is. Just yeah, like totally. like gold embroidery all over it, and on the back, uh, it looks like roses that have been sewn into it. Oh, does it have like roses with like a dagger through the rose coming out of the bottom of the rose? Very much so. Yeah, and it yeah, is. Absolutely. It's very, very angsty. And yeah. Sarek takes it and puts it on over his uh, studded leather. 
Now let's let's remember that two of you are wearing these cherub masks, right? I think and Kara no. and Armoros both have this cherub mask on, though Armoros is has a, a splash of blood across the front and gives him uh, a special power that he can choose to trigger when he so desires. Um, Aya, you you marked down that you recovered your two spell slots, right? Yeah, I see that there. Yep. Cool. Mm -hmm. Just making sure. All right, so uh, yeah, the 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 door under this balcony that this man was just firing down from um, is uh, mostly intact. It it has like one hacked chunk out of the center of it, um, and it's a painted a bright blue. Other than that, you can see down the road, the letters continue off towards uh, deeper into the town. Um, and of course, there's this balcony above with this dead guard sergeant draped over the edge. His, his arm is hanging down and like a slow trickle of blood is dripping down the floor. Um, should I... Is there a way to tell if I can use this key anywhere, or should do I just have to try it on everything? Oh, uh, there is a keyhole in the door. Yeah, I'm just gonna okay. pretty much put this key in all of the keyholes that I can find until it works. <laughs> That's how you do okay, it. Okay, cool. Yeah, you, you you walk up to the door and you insert the. Key. Obvious to you as soon as you insert it here that this key does not fit this door. It doesn't click. Okay. It doesn't like mesh with the mechanism. Uh, and actually, as you're like messing with the doorknob, it turns out this door is unlocked. No. Oh. Cool. Also, I don't think I have my mask on. Didn't I leave it in the... I left it in the chest because I wanted to wait till everyone had a mask. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. Yep. So you're not wearing your mask, but Armoros is. Yeah. Uh, you're, it's not you're important. But... normal in Kara. Uh, cool. Okay, yeah. Let's go in. Nice. I'm going to push the door open and look back. Like, Come on. Let's see. Okay. Uh, in here, the light is bright. There are glowing blue orbs around set in sconces along the wall. What? Um, it sounds like there is water lapping gently. Uh, and it smells, um, as soon as you step through the doorway, you're, you're accosted by the scent of a pond, of a beach, of the ocean, of rotting fish, of like a fresh spring. There's like intense memory smells of various uh, waters. And what you see in front of you is a long reflecting pool surrounded by lush green plants and marble columns. The in pool the house? smells yeah, inside the, the foyer of this house. The the pool smells strongly at times like the sea, like a fresh spring, like a boggy swamp. Um, at the far end of the pool, in its center, there stands a ten foot rippling block of water sitting raised off of the surface of the pool. Inside this block of water rests a marble bust of a noble face with a sloping forehead and a strong crowned by a golden laurel wreath. In the center of the bust's forehead glows a gentle blue orb, a tear of saloon. On the far wall, there is a wooden door that opens deeper into this house. How many others are we up to? You have oh, two no, each tier. currently. We need That's one right. more. Each, each tier just one. levels up. Oh, okay, cool. You, you need a third tier in order to level up. This is the third one. Okay. Yes. Oh. Well, shit, yeah. Just, I go out and grab it, I guess, right? Don't, don't, don't <laughs> yeah, and, do that! And the block of water is, is a key. Ice. It is liquid water standing up off of the surface of the pool. Oh, liquid water. All right. You see in front of you, pool in front of you smells like the sea and a swamp and rotting fish and like a cool, fresh spring. And at the end of the pool, there's this block of liquid water sort of sitting on the surface of the pool. It's rippling gently. And in the center of it is this bust marble head is standing on a column with a golden laurel wreath around its forehead, and in the center of its forehead, a small blue orb glimmers. You recognize this as a tear of saloon. So, what do you do? Are we gonna, Jeff, are you just gonna go for it? Is this like your thing? No, he just stands there and kind of waits for instruction. Um, I think as far as 10 foot by 10 foot translucent cubes go, it's an uh, goes for it. So it's gotta go for a while. So, what? Can you can you turn into like a a fish? He like looks at Inkara. 
I can't turn into anything that swims or flies. Swimming is level four. Flying is level eight. So I'm just a baby druid. Should, should have trained harder then, I think. I can't be a little fish. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, well. But I wonder if, well, I mean, we're, we could swim. In can there. we use hellfire to evaporate the water? Maybe. I don't know if that would damage the tear. Is that not? Oh, also... those tears are mighty strong. Let's try. Can we just uh... not swim into the cube? You I don't to think swim we should into touch a cube? it. No, no. Listen, look, it's floating. Okay. That's very clearly mm. evidence, some sort of tomfoolery. Well, I'm not getting my robe wet, so it's brand new. It's fabulous. Maybe you I think can we do should this. poke it. Poke the water with what? A stick or something, and see if it pokes back. I, I don't know. We were just in a room with lightning tiles. And Kara is our stick. About- and Kara, will um, you poke this? <laughs> No, I will touch it if it needs to come to that. Can't we find something else to poke it with? I'll poke it with my sword cane. Can I Why poke it with my cane like an old lady? Inside and throw the <gasps> body in there and see what happens. Now that's that, an idea. My brother that said that he used to poke people, but then zoo sounds came from the room, so I'm not sure that's the same thing. You have an interesting family. Let's go find a dead body. <laughs> Uh, should so, yeah, we drag go... one of the thugs in? Yeah, sure. I said we do. Are you doing Thug this, Ankara? I mean, if someone can help me, I'm gonna help. Like I'll grab the arms. Well. I we will not help. Bernie's grab the legs, and then we can swing it. Yeah, I'm not gonna help. I don't oh, want to get I was dirty. Oh, we'd hold him up and like just stick one of his little hands. Oh no, we can't get that close. Oh, we should just like swing it. Okay. And, like, let him cool. go. Yeah, armor us if you want to swing him in there. Yeah, yeah you go. You go grab one of the thugs and. That's my idea, but I'm not attached to doing. Carrying him into the room. So like um. Tell me, tell me how this goes. There's like ten feet of tile floor on each side of the pool, and then there's a pool in the middle. It's shallow. It's like two feet deep. It's like a decorative, like reflecting pool inside this fancy manor home. Like this is this is not unusual. You have seen and homes the pool with... smells of different fishy places. Yeah, totally. Like it, it smells like salt water. It smells like the beach. It smells like the sand. It smells like a uh, fetid does, swamp. It does it like... shift through these scents, or do we smell them all at the same time? You, you sort of smell them like all overlaid on top. When you sniff, like you can't get a good read on like how the water smells. It smells like everything oh. and nothing. So we're having a stroke, is what you're saying? Yeah. It smells like burnt toast. Is that what a stroke smells like? <laughs> apparently, yeah. That's I mean, horrible. Apparently, that's apparently, that's yeah. not. I'm gonna think about that every time someone's making toast. That's I'm gonna be horrible. like, Oh that's... no! Cool. Someone's making breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> What is the matter with you? So, the two of you who are carrying in this dead body, are you are you walking into the pool? Are you going to the the one of the sides and trying to toss it out over the water so it hits this this cube? Are you going around behind it to try and toss it directly into the cube? What are you doing? See, we're chucking a body into this cube, my man. <laughs> chuck a body in this cube. Where are you standing when you chuck? The I don't want to. I don't want to pretend that this is something scientific or amazing. We're taking a dead body and we're chucking into a floating <laughs> cube of water. Armrose grabs the dead body, steps into the waiting pool, and goes sloshing yeah. down its length until he's standing yeah, I, directly in front of the cube. I'm strength eighteen, so I can chuck this body probably out. What do you think? Forty-five feet. So I'm just yeah. like <laughs> you can chuck it like fifteen. Feet. Yeah, I know. All right, so you you get to within fifteen feet of the cube and. Earl this body at. Yeah, there's like a grunt, a weird grunt of chucking a body. Yeah. You hear this thwunk as the body slams into the side of the cube. And the water that is running down the surface of the glass is momentarily running over the body as the body falls into the, the water at the base of the glass. So now that now that you've done this, you can actually see there's there's this cube of glass that has a top. And there's water pouring down all sides as it is being pumped up into the glass and then running over the top, like one of those uh, like uh, infinite infinite fish tanks or whatever. Um, it, it's a it's a compelling illusion at first, but now that you've seen it, you understand what's going on here is something um, mechanical 
and not magical. Huh. Hmm. Can we break it then? Uh, well, I'm 15 feet away, right? So I'm, I'm going to look yeah. back at the group, shrug, and be like, should I just try to break it? Break it! Break it! Okay. Break I'm it! Take the body. And this is a yeah. good reference. This is something that a lot of people should have seen anyways. It's a good movie, classic, early... Uh, early 2000s, I think it was late 1990s. No, early 2000s. Jason X. Culture. Okay? <laughs> take, the movie to, take the movie to outer space. Jason's there's one back. scene, one scene in particular where he takes a co-ed young lady in a sleeping bag and he balls up the sleeping bag and slams it up against a tree. That's what I'm going to do minus the sleeping bag. I'm just going to take the body. And minus the tree. You ball up, the, the, ball up the body. Mind you, this was all and, a simulation. A- it was all a simulation by the by. Just remember yeah. that. So is this, but oh, no spoilers. <laughs> Hashtag. No yeah. Should have won an Oscar, in my opinion, but yeah. I mean, who am I? You, you uh, ball so, yeah. up this body, and then you slam it into the side of this glass uh, glass tank. Roll yeah. a roll Break an it. athletics check for me. Athletics? Athletics. Uh, natural 20. Holy shit. <laughs> Damn. So you, you slam this body into the glass, and it just explodes, just like shattering... <laughs> All over water. Can goes... the body explode too? Yes, the body explodes also, <laughs> just like eviscerated by the shards of glass that are just flying everywhere. The water goes exploding out of this container. Um, and let's see. Nice. Yeah, um, Jeff, roll 1d6. Okay. This is the amount of tears I get, I guess? Yeah, totally. Five. Five. Nice. Mm, let's see. It's all acid. The water's acid. There's a dragon. And the glass isn't glass. It's fire. And you're dead. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff has played with me too many times. Yeah. All right. So let's see. I'm going to drag you all over to a different screen. I'm assuming that the rest of you are at the far end of the pool watching all of this occur at down at the other end. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then I need to Very well then, you may all observe this page upon which we have a rendition of said pool, said cube of water, said armros, said other trio. And as the water gushes into the pool and the, the ripples settle, the glass distributes itself evenly across the bottom of the pool, um, a shape rises up out of the water directly in front of, here this red X, is the, uh, the bust. I'm going to mumble to myself. Uh, very googly moogly. It is a, a large... Um, it looks like a tendril of water with a split maw that it opens. It has two long catfish whiskers that are trailing off of its bottom a maw. Violin. It has spines across its back. It has various flailing tendrils that come off of its very body. It stands there and hisses at you. Would each of you Quick question, for initiative? On a short break, I got my second win back, right? Yes. Yeah. But no hit dice because I used those. Dudes. Okay, got it. Correct. Yep. Uh, okay. Roll initiative, he says. Okay, give me another 20, please. 13. Okay. 14. 14. Very nice, very nice. 14. This time my head turns into a cat's butt. <laughs> oh, sorry. Right. Queen needs to put you back on there. Add turn, and you got a 14. Very nice. All right. Dude, that'd be so disturbing, though. You're talking shit now, but you're probably going to get your ass handed to you in a second here. Bro, I don't... You know I am. That's why I'm talking shit yeah. now. I'm so That's why he's here. Your head right. is ironically <laughs> also going to look like a cat's butthole. I can't wait. About to get punched <laughs> inwards by this six. fucking. Season six, I was going to be like, I did stats for the show. Jeff was knocked out 400 times. It, it was 400. <laughs> like, it turns out that. The tank is doing his job, yeah. tanking damage for the rest of the Yeah. Very well done. All right. I make my jokes so, unconscious, and then I just get unconscious and get quiet. And just, you know. Sarek and then Aya, what do you do, Sarek? I, it's. Oh, action search back to you. Thank you. Tom. I don't, I don't quite know. It's, 
a weird water beast? It's made of water? Yes. Made of water. It's a watery tendril that has, you know, jaws and the, the shape Here. of eyes and fangs, tendrils coming off of it. Let, let me roleplay Jesse's character quick. It's a water creature? So I guess I crawl across the wall on the other side of the room and just try to grab a box or something? <laughs> first off, first off, I wouldn't screech like a demon. <laughs> I would whimper like some small child. First <laughs> off, sir. Secondly, it wouldn't be a box. It would be a column, and i try to climb it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I'm going to try and shoot it, I guess. I'm going to try and stay okay. out of the water, though, and try to just shoot it from not in the water. Very nice. I don't know what the hell an arrow is going to do, but fantasy rules. Maybe this is maybe this will work. And I'm next to it, so you get your advantages and shit. A 13 does hit. It's it's waving around and as it flails, it flails itself into your arrow. So you, it was it was a close thing, but Big you hit idiot. it, dealing nine damage. Now you can tell, as you have been able to tell in some other circumstances, that your arrow doesn't deal as full its impact as you are used to it dealing, but it's still not so. Does he get more damage? Sneak attack as well. You do yeah. your sneak attack damage. So go ahead and roll that. So nine, twelve. Yeah. So that's. It's probably susceptible to fire. Yeah, there or lightning. Aya. Aya, what do you Don't do? Don't do lightning. I'm standing in the water. Um, I am looking at my inventory real quick. Give me a second here. Steven, is this, so this thing is made of water? Or it's in it, the water? That's certainly what it looks like. It's magical. It's a magical beast right. guarding the thing. The thing. Guarding the, the tea of, of saloon. <laughs> Mm. Someone asked me how you spell saloon. I assumed it was like S E L U N E. Yes. But could it also just be like saloon, like a place where a Wild West guy would go to drink? Saloon, S A L O O N. Yeah. yeah. Um. Sorry. I thought I had something and then I didn't. <laughs> um. <laughs> now I just want sarsaparilla. Ooh. Casparilla. Ooh, I love root beer. Oh yeah, that's really good. Root beer is good. Yeah, good. especially like on tap, like when they make it in house. Oh, oh yeah, that's the best. Ice yeah. cold in uh, a frosty yeah. mug. Oh yeah. yeah. Should they made oh, it to replace mm -hmm. actual beer? They tried to. That went mm -hmm. during the. Like, hey, this is beer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um. I love it. <laughs> We have like a lantern. Can I have right? a voice now? Oh, poor girl. Yeah, I think someone has a lantern. I just want to put beer in the portal on my nipples. Okay, I think I'm over like overthinking this because I'm like trying to come up with some grand scheme. So was like... I, and I just shot an arrow at it, and it did damage. I know, so I've given I know. up trying to grand scheme. Because I was like, there's got to be a way, but I'm not a fucking. Water Listen, vendor. I hex it and I shoot it with my other thing. That's what I fucking do, all right? <laughs> I got a sword cane for flavor, but that's honestly the same thing as well. All right, that's just what we got. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did I hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do. All right. My character's going to be knocked unconscious on my you're just, turn. You're just coming for my neck today. And I was like. <laughs> Jess just been waiting all, all this time. I just I grumbling to himself. That, that Normally I'm it's Brit. I get back. Normally but... it's Brit. Today it's me. <laughs> Oh, Remember the make, one time Griff made a comment about her feet, and then that was it for the entire episode. <laughs> Thanks for she reminding me. Sorry, sorry. She got Jeff. <laughs> and now yeah. today it's me. <laughs> you gotta share the love, man. It's like when you pull aggro, you know. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, well, here's the thing. Last season was the season of Brit. Now it's the season of Bronze. Season of things. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Brit season. Bronze season. Brit season. Bronze season. Well, Jesse's season three. So <laughs> yeah, clearly. I'm waiting. It's it's always Steven's season. Let's be honest. Yeah. I, yeah fair and and for your information, Jeff, I was gonna hex it and Eldritch blast it. <laughs> but but I'm I don't. Not, even... I'm not... 
I'm not even making fun of you. It's it's, uh, it's your it, you know it's it's your class. Yeah. That's the joke they always make. Yeah. That's what you I do. don't even know if necrotic damage is gonna do anything to a big old water thing. Let me look. Water single hopper. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's very interesting. Cool. Let's run. Um. Fuck it. I'm gonna hex it and then I'm gonna hit it with my Eldritch Blast. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Fabulous. Awesome. Your Eldritch Blast hits. Roll your damage. Ten force damage. Ooh. Roll your uh, six. Okay. Fifteen damage. All right, bronze. You know, like Armros is up there, like talking shit, and you just like this thing through the head, and like its yeah. water head just like bursts, Poof. and it slowly slumps down, and then it reforms its head and sits right back up, and it turns to look in your direction, and then it opens its jaws and screams. But you dealt a serious blow. Minus and it looks yeah. Hey, it looks this like is almost hey, like something out yeah. of Princess Mononoke or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah Jeff, absolutely. What is what does a water scream sound like, Jeff? If you could give it us that. <laughs> An unpleasant sound. Yeah. It sounds like steam. It sounds like a steam whistle from like a. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> With like echoes of Tyrannosaurus ooh, ooh, howl ooh. in there. All right, Armoros, you're standing right next to this. What do you do? God. Um, and Kara, you're next. I know this is cheating, but again, I'm, I'm hazy, uh, having not played it for a little while here. There is no bolstering of defense I can do, right? There's no stance I can take, right? So you you can spend your action to take the dodge action, and that gives attacks against you disadvantage. Start again. Fuck yeah, I do that. Um, but it, you can't then also take an attack unless you second wind, or I unless understand. you action surge. Nope, I'm taking the dodge. Cool. And I'm aggroing it in front of it and going, your scream sounded like a bucket of water. And that's the best nice. thing to come up with. Uh, roll, a, roll an intimidation check. Absolutely. <laughs> you didn't expect it to take this long. 18. Nice. Yeah, totally. It's It, it, it turns at you, and then it like lets off Spurts of steam. And then, uh, Inkara, it's your turn. Uh, nice. yeah. So I have to move up so I can get it. So Chat, real quick. You ready for the double 20s this evening's going to roll on his first attack against me, by the way? Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Britt, sorry. That's okay. Uh, I was moving anyway. Okay, so I'm going to move up, and I'll do produce flame this time and throw the fire at it. Nice. You can throw it up to 30 feet, 30, which yeah, you are now within. Enough. Awesome. Make a ranged spell attack. So that's 1d20 plus your oh, uh, ranged you. spell attack modifier. Plus five, yeah. Ah, thank you. Oh, damn. <laughs> Roll 2d8. Is that a first level spell or is that a, 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 a cantrip? It is a cantrip. Nice. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Five damage. Well. Better than nothing. And also you can tell it takes the super accurately. Five damage. So there you go. All right. Uh, this water weird um, throws out a, a tendril at you, Jeff. Okay. Hitting you. Disadvantage, sir. Oh, yeah, right. Thank you for the correction. And it misses. It, it tries to slip this tendril. But you're, you're like remembering your footwork from your time in the in the army. And, and you dodge out of its attack. Sarek and Aya, it's your turn. Sarek, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to shoot him again. I'm going to stay out of the water. I'm going to shoot him again. Nice. 15 is a hit. Roll your damage. Roll your sneak attack damage. Yo. That's seven. Again, you know, your arrows are, are doing a small amount, but, you know, a little bit. Aya, how about yourself? Armorous, you're on. So this thing is, like, holding the orb, right? It's sort of like... Or the tear, sorry. The thing is sort of swirling around the bust of mm -hmm. the, the head of this person. Um, mm -hmm. And the head has this crown on it, and the orb is sitting in the in the head's forehead. So, okay. like, it's not holding it, but it's so, it, it's just water. So it's sort of like swooshing its way around this 
this marble bust. Okay. Um, does it seem intelligent? You have no, you haven't seen anything to indicate one way or another yet. Mm. Well, um, where I am at, Steve, I can see the Rubik's Cube has been playing, right? <clears throat> yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. It's pretty intelligent. But uh, Aya hasn't seen it. Right. Uh, can I attempt to speak with it telepathically? Yeah, you can. Okay. Um, I shall say to it, hopefully, if it, I don't know if I could talk to it or not. So your, your telepathy um, crosses language barriers. So if yes. this thing has a like human intelligence, you will be mm -hmm. able to talk to it. Okay, so standing very heroically after blasting its head off uh, yeah. with my golden skull in my hand, which is my focus, and it's like glimmering with like a, almost like a green flame atop it, I'm going to speak with it and say, um, relinquish the tear, and we will, as a gift, gift you your sad, wretched existence so that you may dwell here. Whoa. For the rest of Whoa. your pitiful Whoa. life. <laughs> that sounds Whoa. like an intimidation check. Sales pitch was like super good, and then it was like <laughs> wow. fucking turn. terrible. Turn. All right, roll roll an intimidation check. Oh god. Let me talk to you, yeah, man, just so I can get him fired. Because he's I think I you. think it um it responds in your mind and you hear this. <laughs> Is that uh, laughing? Is it laughing yeah. at me? Yeah. Oh, and then I it responds laughing. and it says, oh, yeah. Soon you will go into the black and deep. I whoa, will bring whoa, you time into out. the water. Yeah. Time out. Can you do that voice but like a little higher so we can see? Uh, how are you doing that? <laughs> what? How are you doing that? All right. All right. Okay. 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 Wait. wait up here. Soon you will go into the black and deep and I will drown you deep within the water. Every that's, boy's that's, made that sound once or twice, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Totally normal. Or like in front of a fan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't respond kindly to threats. Um, I'll just say, have it your way then, and then like toss another Eldritch Blast at it and really hope I don't miss or just made an ass of myself. Awesome. You never miss. 20, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> 13 force, roll Bam. your D6. Bam. Plus 16. three is 16. Jesus. You're crushing it. Armos, yeah. it's your turn. And then Ankara, what do you do? Can I see the damage reflected in its health bar, Stephen, please? Put that in there for me. Uh, is that not yeah. visible to you? Uh, I can see it. Well, then I'll just. Oh, it. Roll yeah. 20 has singled Mia, all right? Yeah, yeah for some reason, it, it is intended to show you. Uh, if, 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 like, on a scale of 1 to 50, out of the bottom of 11. Yeah. Um, well, Steven, since I gained my second wind, I believe what I can do is swing at it and then also take the dodge action. You are That's correct. Ha-ha! <laughs> well, then, uh, he, like, looks back at Godai Girl, sees some weird exchange, but then she blasts, and he's like, That's the spirit, and then he swings at it. And I get a 17. 17 hits. 11. 11 damage. Very nice. Again, you know, you're not dealing your full amount here, but you're making nope. a very concerted effort. You're dealing a little bit. And Kara, your turn. Well, hey, let me just verbalize this, Stephen. I, I yes. then take the dodge action as my second win. Thank you, Jeff. Well done. All right, Ankara. I'm going to try to steam the rest of this water thing away with my flame. Nice. Ugh. 12, unfortunately, it's, it's dodging... Dodging, ducking, dipping, diving, and dodging. And as a result, <laughs> your fire orb goes flying past it, splattering against the right. wooden door, door behind it. And oh, then else it is reaches out. Is this guy's out. name really Water Weird? Yeah. It really is Water Weird. I feel it bad reaches for out him. at Jeff, striking at you with disadvantage due to your dodging action, and it misses you. Sarek yeah. and Aya, we've returned around to you again. What do you. <clears throat> Can I try to shoot directly at the bust? What are you trying to do? Uh, I'm trying... I've been wondering that for two seasons, Stephen. <laughs> That's a scary question. There's a monster in front of us, and Jesse's like, there's a puzzle somewhere here, though. But there's something more to this. That... More accurate. More accurate. Uh, I... Now it's Jesse's season. 
I want to see if I can if I can either destroy the bus, which is probably impossible, or mm. dislodge the tier. But basically, okay. attack the bus and see what happens. Basically, is all I'm trying to do right now. Yeah, uh, you're gonna roll at disadvantage because that's a called shot. But sure. I'll let you do it. Okay, go for it. An eleven. Uh, unfortunately, so like the the creature dodging and weaving in front of or sort of around it. Sometimes the bust is inside the creature's body. Sometimes the creature slides to the side of the bust, etc. Um, you're trying to do this, and the creature raises a tendril and slaps your arrow away, deflecting your attack t t towards the bust. Aya, it's your turn. Shoot the, um, bu shoot the bust. Shoot the bust. She's the only one doing damage to the thing. Jesse. Can you say that to me? Shoot the bust. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'll uh, force damage. I mean, at most, it'll knock it over. I mean, it might blow the entire thing up. I don't know what the fuck is going to happen. But great, we'll find out together. Okay. If he says shoot the bust, I'll shoot the bust. Um. I launch an Eldritch blast at the at the bust. Okay, you're attacking with disadvantage. All right. Ooh, yeah, a seven. So your Eldritch Blast, you're trying to like wait for time bust and you fire at it within the water where it moves finger. And like I think the Eldritch Blast like singes a few hairs off the top of Armorosa's head. It, yeah. Your voice cuts out at the most pivotal moment. It's so <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> like right when you're just, you'd be like, so then what happens is and then <laughs> And then you take 12 and, damage, and I'm like... And then you all die. <laughs> what the hell happened? That's but I think awful. As, as the second shot goes towards the bus, Armoros turns back and is like, Hey, it, it's it's going to kill me if you don't kill it. Armoros, attack, attack the bus! I shout. No, I'm literally just defending here. That's all I can do. Attack the bus! Are you just defending? Whose turn is it? It's your turn, Armoros. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Attack the bus! Yeah. No, I take dodge, obviously. Okay, obviously. And Kara, it's your turn. What do you think? Kara, He's attack, each time if attack, I don't take the, dodge. attack the bust. I'm going to kill the thing. The, can we <laughs> attack the bust after we kill the water weir? Maybe they're connected. We don't know. That's what we have to try. Well, then if they're connected, I am attacking the bust. Okay. Yeah. He's doing it at disadvantage. We don't know if it's connected. Yeah, but if we get it, though, then who has the advantage we do? I'm you just the water weir. I'm killing it. Yeah, you're attacking the water weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You deal six damage to this water weird, which is exactly as many points as is required to kill it. And what so, happens to the bust, Steven? Does anything happen to the bust? Nothing happens to the bust. The water weird screams with the ear piercing ready for tea. <laughs> and then it sinks with into the... the water, dissipating and vanishing. The bust stands free and uh, clear with this golden crown and a tear of saloon glistening in its forehead. Ooh. Sark snatches that crown up like, yoink. What? No, I'm closer than you. You're like 150 feet away. Uh, nice try. Y'all are like, y'all were attacking that thing and while we were attacking, I snuck up. I was like, <laughs> I want to use my sneak action and my dash action, Steven. I would like to get there and take that shit. Thank you very much. Please, please roll a stealth test. No, I, I grab it. I'm right there. <laughs> uh, stealth test. Eh? Okay, you got a 16, and then you roll, you you, you, you double move with a, a a move and a dash. Yep. Yeah, okay. So you, you move in that direction, and by the time you're halfway, Pool Armoros has picked up the, the crown. I would like to <laughs> steal that from him. <laughs> I so, will gladly punch you in the face. Are you face in the water now? Is, no, is I'm Sarah still not. I'm still not in the water. I'm on oh. the outside. I'm the outside. Well, I'm not getting this water. Are you kidding me? When we begin our next episode, we will see the fate showdown between <laughs> and Armoros. But as it is approaching the end of our show, I think we should call it here and start the next episode uh, with you having obtained the third and final tier necessary to level up to level three. Ooh, baby. And then we can decide what happens from there. You could return to the Gardens of the Moon and level up, or you could continue pressing onwards and see what you're able to discover deeper within this house. Jesse, I'm going to toss it over to you 
and let you take us away for our uh our our outro all right well that is it for us today everyone thank you so much for uh watching and chatting and uh putting up with jeff it's been great uh (laughs) but before we wrap up let's go around this little uh screen here and start with who i is that brit still i don't know um you know what jesse it's 2019 and i'm still brit wiseman oh wow yes glad we cleared that up some things don't change you know what i mean some things don't change new year same me uh, what's yeah. going on with you? <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, guys. This is fun. I was really excited to come back. I'm really glad we are playing this game. I won't be here next week. I'm really sorry. I'll be on an airplane coming home yep. from. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna have Kairos return this trip. For a week. Um, yeah. but I'll be back after that. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have anything to to say other than like have a great week. And uh, thanks for watching. Fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stephen. And what's... happy New Year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stephen, what's going on with you? Um, man, not much. I thought I had something else to say. Something. Oh, uh, Sunfall Cycle. It's great. You should be here and you should watch it. And I love you all. Thank you all for being here and watching this show. Uh, I'm having a great time. Someone tweeted that. Uh, what? What did they say? Um, how the f does Silent Osiris manage to make a D and D game? for the millionth time. So I'm glad that's the feeling that you're getting because that's exactly It right. only cuts Rhymes. out when you're about to have like a legit... Because so literally, Steven, yeah, it literally, literally what you said is, how the hell does Silent Osiris... And then it was just silence. Yep. Yeah, isn't that a great comment? Isn't that just, it touches my heart. It's a choose your so adventure. It's like it touches your right? what? Because that part cut out too. It's <laughs> <laughs> troll along. Uh, yes, this person made it seem that, like they should play Dark Souls again because of this show. So thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. You can follow me at the internet on, at Silent Osiris. The O is a zero. Uh, I'm going to pass it back to Jesse and let you take it away for more outro. All right. Uh, next up, I think we should go to. Uh, all right, take it away. <laughs> no, it's bronze. bronze it's, I want to go to bronze. It's, it was... <laughs> it's only because I put oatmeal in my mouth, huh? Yep, that's that damn right. Yep, I knew it. Uh, hi, hello. I'm that bronze girl. Um, I'm the second biggest asshole on this cast. It's up to you to figure out who's number one. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Uh, I'm strongly saying. disputed. This is vote in a post show. Can't believe she called you an asshole like that, man. That's... God, it's so mean. Bronze is so mean. Yeah, um, so mean. I'm just kidding. I love all of these people. I, I all of my faces are usually just ones of sheer bewilderment of like, what is happening? But they're always great. Um, yeah, you can find me on the internet at that bronze girl. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, I'm in a cool thing next yeah. month. Um, yeah, I got to play D&D with uh, a bunch of the cast from the Netflix show Daredevil, Woo! including Deborah wow. Ann Wall and Tommy Walker and a bunch of other celebrities that I'm under NDA to not disclose. But if you like was D&D Coxie Fifth Boy there? Edition, was the was less who? cute Cox there? Who's the uh-huh. less cute Cox? Doesn't matter. Matt Damon? Was Matt Damon there? Was Matt Damon there? I can neither confirm nor deny. Was was Ben Affleck there? Once again, can neither confirm nor deny. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, it's called Relics and Rarities. So I was talking about Charlie Cox, by the by the by. Oh. I don't know why when I thought of you, I immediately thought of Matt Damon? A yeah. lot of people have that problem. Oh, it's okay. A lot of people get us confused yeah. when I'm out in public. They're like, are you Matt Damon? And I'm like, yes, I yeah. will have sex with you. It happens. It ha- it's crazy. It happens all the time. You know, it's yeah. definitely one of those things where I was like, I don't know. If, I, don't, I, I don't know. If I, I did go to you. Mars, and now I'm back. It's crazy. <laughs> it's Cox, crazy. A more attractive Matt Damon. You, I, didn't have to, I didn't have to say it. I didn't even have to say it. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna. That's it. I'm gonna toss it back to Jesse with that. Uh, take it away, more attractive Matt Damon. 
I'm gonna need everyone to clip everything that just happened here and just <laughs> post it everywhere. Also, Jeff, how are you? What's going on with you? I'm how, great. How are you Jesse. feeling today, Jeff? Yeah, are you okay? Yeah. Is, is everything good. going well? Everything's we going care well. about you. Yeah, I can't complain, you guys. I've I've got uh, two legs, two arms, and uh, most of my head. So I'm and I'm a still... really cute dog. I got a cute dog. He is. Uh, I don't know. The show is disturbing him. I think he could feel your guys' negative energy when you guys yeah, called me an asshole. Yeah, our so he, he uh, threw his mat away and then just kicked the bones around. I'm not even kidding. Like, <laughs> I like, I I'm like, I, I understand dogs think differently than us. But I'm like, what is, what is that? Like, I, he's, he's normally like very like, I like all my things here, but then he just got up and was like, get this mat away. The bones are stupid, and I was laying down. He's he's cranky today. He wants everybody else to. <laughs> He's feeling fussy. Uh, no, I'm just really happy to be doing this again. This was, a, like, a, like a voice says, a weekly highlight. These are great people and a lot of fun. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at InControlTV. Please do. Apparently a lot of bots followed me over the years, so I've uh, I've lost a lot of followers as Twitter is finding out that that's a scam. <laughs> um, so if any of, the, any of you human people would like to follow me and interact with me on the social medias, you can consider that, please. Uh, or robot for me people, but not robot robots. No. Uh, and yeah, and if you are a robot person, listen, I know somebody that would have sex with you, by the way. <laughs> it's Jesse Cox. Um, it's Jesse Cox. It is Jesse Cox. It's been... <laughs> if there are any single bots out there, let me know. <laughs> I, got a, I got a vacuum cleaner that hasn't seen anyone in years, man. Anyways, <laughs> ah, that might be too real. Listen, I'll wrap this up real quick. Uh, for me personally, what I'm, I'm I'm going to be commentating some Warhammer coming up, which is really cool. The Las Vegas Open is happening in early February. Um, yep. Really cool. Tabletop stuff. If you're listening to this, there's a chance you're somewhat familiar or even enamored with that kind of stuff. So you can follow my social media or Warhammer, and, and that kind of stuff will be made more aware for you. Otherwise, on my channel, I just stream strategy games. So thank you. Uh yeah, that's I guess. Also, that's it. I love assholes. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? Clip Sorry. it, really. Clip it. Clip well, it. if you guys are my friends, you kind of have to, I guess. So. Yeah. I love <laughs> assholes. I love assholes. Who Live loves fast, assholes? Eat ass. <laughs> it's 2019. It's 2019. I love assholes. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's it for us. Thank you so much. Uh, we will see you next week with another episode. Uh, it should be great. Eric will be back and more nonsense will occur. Anyway, goodbye, everybody. Have a good one and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 I love assholes. <laughs> assholes. <laughs> You know, where's the payoff? Bring the strippers and boots! We do occasionally talk about video games. Bring the strippers and boots! Out of that time of video games. Bring the strippers and boots! Oh, thank God, I don't need pants now. Hey, JC, what are you doing? Not much. Making a fortune. It's a professional broadcast. Yeah, now uh, sing the music. It's a professional broadcast. Bring the strippers and boots! It's a professional broadcast. Now here's to ask and answer one simple question. It's a professional broadcast. Woo-hoo! <laughs>